Hello and welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy from Umbrella Arts Academy. I'm so excited to paint with you today. And today we are going to be tackling this chunky little bumblebee. Now this bumblebee is going to be our slightly larger, fluffier, furrier cousin to the honeybee that there are videos on um, in the studio crew and our live session. Um, but I wanna tackle this guy here. So let's go over supplies and materials. Right now I am working on um, an Arsh watercolor block. Now this is a really big block, so it goes all the way over here. I have it covered up here and I'm just taping out my edges. So I got this block as a gift some time ago, actually for photographing a wedding. Um, but this block um, is huge and I don't always use it. I don't need all of this paper, so I'm sectioning it off. But I do wanna get the benefits of having a block so I didn't want to separate the paper and cut it up. So I'm just covering up the paper that I'm not using and we are going to be using about an eight by eight square of this much larger piece here. So I'm going to do my best not to get paint on the rest of the paper here. So in addition to my paper, so this is an Arch 140 pound cold press block paper, I am going to be using um, a couple of different colors here. So for our honeybee itself, we're gonna be starting with the yellows. So I have three kind of yellows here that I'm going to be using in different ways. Um, I have my cadmium yellow, which is the lightest yellow here. I have a nickel azo yellow, as well as a diorolide yellow here. The diorolide yellow is very close to a gamboge yellow. I think I call it a gamboge yellow a lot. Um, when referring to this particular palette, and it's not, it's a diorolide yellow, um, but they're very similar in nature. Also, I have my Payne's Gray here, and then I will be dropping in some of my Cadmium Red uh, for our flower, as well as Sap Green over here, my favorite green. I need to refill my palette there and replace some of that sap green. And then, of course, I'll be using a little bit of my cadmium red also to um, mix in some orangey colors with my yellow in just a few spots. So that's our color palette. My primary brushes are going to be my silver black velvet size 12 brush here, my trusty friend that I use for a lot of my paintings. I'm also probably going to pick up my size six Princeton Select brush here uh, for a few of the smaller areas. And last but not least, I also have a Princeton Select um, script liner or rigger brush that has these really long, thin um, bristles on it, but it helps when, especially when it's wet and has paint on it, it's very thin to get in some fine line details. So I'll be using that. This is a two slash zero um, brush. That's the size, but any fine liner or script brush, rigger brush will work great for that. All right, so let's get started. Now that we've gone over our supplies, we have our outline down and we will start putting together our bumblebee. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down um, a base coat uh, for my yellows. Now I'm gonna go in this section here and this section here are yellow, but you can see that this wing goes over the top of these two sections and sometimes you'll see these painted and they'll actually be opaque, but they do have a little translucency in them. So I'm gonna show you how I'll do that. But the first thing I'm gonna do um, is start with my yellows. Now, I'm not gonna erase these pencil lines. If I was painting this as a commission, um, I would definitely erase those and lighten them up a little bit, but I'm gonna leave them here for now so you can kind of see what I'm doing. But the first thing I'm doing is picking up my cadmium yellow and my larger brush, and I'm just gonna start throwing that down in these areas. Now, this is gonna be my lightest yellow color. And I'm not being too careful on the edges. I do want this to be a little bit loose. Just throwing that in there. And now I'm gonna go down to this section down here and throw some yellow down there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rinse off my brush, add quite a bit of water and make this an even lighter version of yellow under here. This will get more apparent as we add layers but the part under the wing is going to be a slightly different shade or a lighter hue 
um, that's going to translate as the transparency of the wing. All right, so we have our first layer of yellows down. And now I'm gonna take some of this nickel azo yellow. It's a darker kind of browner yellow color. And I am going to just start dropping in while this yellow is still very wet and just letting the wet on wet kind of mix those together, but letting some of that other bright yellow show through. Now, again, when I go in this transparent area, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to use a watered down lighter version. And now I'm just gonna let that set and dry and we are gonna be adding some additional layers there. So let's jump over to our Payne's Gray. So I'm picking up Payne's Gray and I am just gonna start putting that down. Now my edges, I am going to leave rough and I'm actually going to also leave some of these areas throughout a little rough as well. I'm staying away from the edge of my yellow here for a little bit until it dries a little bit more. I don't want the Payne's Gray to overwhelm it. All right, so same thing in here, a lighter version of that Payne's Gray. And we'll throw some details on top that will translate that a little more. Some of this yellow is leaking down in here. I'm not going to worry about it too much just yet. I'm going to just scoop a little bit up this way so it doesn't get too much more. And this part is going to look a little messy but it will come together with our details later on so I'm going to move down here and then lighten that up And if these areas aren't too different yet, that's okay. We'll work on that on the next layer. And this area down here is actually outside the wing. And I'm just gonna take my damp but clean brush a little bit of this water off here so it doesn't continue to bleed into that space. There we go. All right, so now that that's continuing to dry, the yellow is getting a little bit drier. It's not super, it's still bleeding in, you can see, but that's okay. I want these two areas to overlap a bit. I'm gonna go in with some more Payne's Gray, darker, and go over these areas, dropping in bits of color, and again, still leaving my edges rough. and a little bit fuzzy, and I'm gonna go right up to the edge of this yellow area now. And we're gonna come down here. 
and I'm not going into the wing part any longer. I'm gonna stay on the outside of it. And then, all right, so now that you have a second layer on there, I am gonna pick up my rigger brush. I'm gonna add a little water to it and I'm just gonna start to go around the edges and pull out some of those fuzzies. See that? And I can do it inside here too, but I just want to make sure they're a little bit lighter. And just around the edge, while these are still damp, and leave a nice jagged kind of edge. And you can even go up into the yellow. My yellow is still wet. And that's one of the benefits of working on 100% cotton paper is that when you're trying to do something like this where you need various stages of drying, but you don't want to get a lot of backwashes and things. The 100% cotton paper really will be much easier to work with. All right, so let's let that dry. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of my um, Dyrolide yellow. So this is the orangey yellow. And go back over some of the edges with my rigger brush here. And again, it's still a little damp in there. And then just a tiny bit of cadmium red to this to give it an orange, even oranger hue. Drop that in a few places and that's just gonna give it some dimension and interest. Excellent, okay. So we've got the majority of the body done, and now we're gonna move on to some of these other details in the head, um, as well as the wings, and also work on our flower. All right, I'm gonna to move to my size six brush for this head part. Now, the head is made up of eyes and then the, this other fuzzy head part, but the eyes, although they have lots of fuzzies around them, they will reflect a little bit of light so I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm going to paint these eyes in first and leave a reflection spot there and there. And then I'm going to go back in here, add a little water. And the same thing here, we're gonna go back into, I'm gonna just drop in a few areas. We're gonna go back in with our rigger brush and pull out some of those fuzzies. So back in with the rigger brush. Just pulling out the fuzzies. fuzzy little bumblebee. And now you do have some few detail antennas up here. You can put those in. I'll probably put them in again because I'm going to let them dry, but that 
leaf, or I'm sorry, the petal behind it will probably get painted over a little bit. All right, so now that the head is in, let's go along our wings and we're going to start just adding some details over top of them. Just a few sparse ones to give the suggestion. We're gonna use our rigger brush so these lines stay very fine. So along the edge of the wing is where the, um, the I guess the membrane is the thickest here. And a little bit there. I don't want to outline the whole thing or it will give it a very, much more cartoony look, but just providing a few little suggestions of where that uh, wing stops is all you really need. And now I'm going to take a little bit more, a lighter, so I'm watering it down a little bit, paints gray, and I'm going to add in some suggestions of a few details. Now everything kind of comes from this center here and then gets thinner and the membranes kind of splay out towards the bottom. And I'm not going to put in too, too much. I'm just going to kind of leave it like that. So there we have a nice translucent wing. You can always go back in and add more later. That's all I'm gonna do for now. So this one over here, this doesn't really have anything behind it because of, you know, it's not falling over top of the bee. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of my Payne's Gray, very light, and just make some shadows in this so that you understand that is a wing. It does have some of the similar textures Put some gray in there. It's falling over a white background, so some of the color will be different. And I'll let that dry and I'll add a few more details like I did this one, just to show the various textures in the wing. All right, so let's let all of that dry and work on our flower for a little bit. Ah, I need a new space in my palette. All right, time to flip things around. Here we go. So I'm gonna be picking up cadmium red Cadmium red is a really nice um, semi-transparent color. The cadmium colors always have a little opacity to them, I find. And I'm going to pick some of that Dyrolide yellow and add it to there. So we're getting kind of a peachy orange red color. And add a little water. All right, so now I'm just going to start laying in some of my petals. And I think these petals are going to be, I'm keeping these loose. I think they're gonna get lighter towards the end and they're gonna have um, darker, crisper edges. So I'm gonna, now that I've put some of that in, some color to the edge. And then it's gonna get whiter towards the base. Do the same thing here. Use my wet on wet. Same thing on this one, leaving a little bit of a gap between some of the petals. This is a really nice poppy color. This isn't a very specific flower. It certainly could be a poppy, I think. I have a nice clean brush now. 
little damp. I'm just going to pull some color out of the base here. Give it a nice graduated look. Blend those in. I am going to put, after this dries a little bit, a little bit of a detail here to separate these petals so that they're not too big of a glob. And then I'm going to water this down quite a bit. And then for my petals behind, I'm going to make them a little lighter. I'm not going to worry about going over the details of the belly, uh, under the belly, so the legs in, in those areas under here. I'm just going to paint right over them because I am going to um, go over top of them with a darker color, so it's going to be fine. go and while this continues to dry let's drop in a little more cadmium a little more up here over here along the ridge separate that a little bit and then just bring this lighter color all the way down All right, and after this dries, I am going to put a little bit of a, let me show you here, I'm going to put a little bit of a center, like the stamen area in here, and I'll do this in a darker Payne's gray color as well. I could have left it blank and then also dropped in a little yellow, but I didn't. I'm just pulling out some color so you can see kind of where I'm going to put that. So I'm going to put that right here in that area. Okay, so let's let that dry as well, and we can always add some more details later. Actually, I'm going to pick up just a little of this and add a little. These back petals, I want them to be lighter, but they're a little flat here. So I'm going to add in just a little detail. And then let it dry. Okay. So let's add our sap green stem. And you can do this certainly while this is still wet, but mine is dry and it would bleed in a little bit. So I'm just going to add kind of the back area, add a little bit of yellow to get a little lighter color on the end here. And I'm just going to bring that down. And we'll throw some leaves in there in a little bit. few little darker spots with sap green and just bring that line down there. So now you have a nice transition, some lighter colors, some darker colors. And again, we'll throw some more leaves in there to kind of bring that all together shortly. All right, so let's go back to our center. More Payne's Gray, activate that up. And I am just gonna start dropping in along that edge. And that is still quite wet right there. So, oops. Wait for it to dry, be patient. So 
So I'm just gonna pull this off here. We'll add another layer of red. Momentarily after that dries. All right, so let that dry and we can always go back in with a little bit more. I ran my hand through this, I'm realizing. Now I'm rushing. Do you guys ever do that? Do you rush? And you just want to keep painting and keep going. And you don't wait for things to dry. Then you get issues like this, but that's fine. I have lots of tricks to cover those things up. All right, so our bumblebee is looking really good as it has dried. I'm going to go back in more Payne's Gray, nice and thick, to just add in some details so i have to kind of so i'm just gonna go around the edges with a really thick coat of Payne's gray on my rigger and just add in some fine finer details i'm gonna go over some of these areas that already have you know are already Payne's gray but as they've dried they've lightened depending on how much water I added to it. So I'm just adding, fill this whole area in here. Adding more little hairs. I go up into here. Again, just being careful in these under the wing areas. You can do the same thing. You just have to have a lighter version of the color that you're working with. Okay, and then a little light version of Payne's Gray over here. I'm gonna add in just a few details for this wing back here. There we go, that's it. And then lastly, for our bee, we're gonna go in and do, now that all those, that back petal area hopefully is dry, we're gonna add in those legs. So this is what's keeping this bee attached so he's reaching out there all right let's do one more round I'm gonna do of with this cadmium red color I'm gonna add some details back here There we go. Add a little more on this edge here. Just basically going along the edge, adding some darker color and then bringing it, swooping it down towards the center of the petals. I'm just gonna add some darker color in here. and some finishing edges on these petals back here, because I want them to be a little bit darker than the ones behind. Especially here where we went over our, had our little wet on wet accident. Clean brush, clean but damp, and 
just bringing that texture down. Same thing over here. Nice concentrated color. Cadmium red. Right along the edge. And then a clean brush to kind of clean it up. and blend it in. All right, I'm gonna do one more kind of round over here. I'm just not liking how dull these are in the background. I want them to be lighter, but I don't want them to be a different color, you know, altogether a dull version. All right, so let's add some leaves. Gonna add some big leaves over here and you know you could even add um, another flower like off in the background with some wet on wet and I could actually I'm just gonna make some big sweeping gestures here and I'm gonna rinse my brush off completely and let's see we're going rogue here and experimenting. So I'm just adding wet on wet around these, this whole flower and these leaves. My water's a little green. I'm okay with that right now. Because what I'm gonna do, you'll see, I'm gonna go around the whole thing. And I might have to do these, a uh, few details of these leaves again, but We are learning on the fly here together. I'm gonna to go through that wing there. I'm not gonna worry about these too much. I'm gonna let them bleed into the background. So the background has a little bit of a green tint to it, as you can see, which is okay. And then I'm gonna take some of this cadmium red and just watch. I'm gonna make like the approximation of flower shapes. And because it's wet on wet, they're just going to blend out. Put some smaller ones in there. So these are kind of just like blobs in the background but they're meant to be blobs in the background. They're meant to be farther away, out of focus. And I'm just gonna add in some green stems. And then also with my green, some approximation of leaves but you don't need to get too crazy, just I mean, you want them to have a little bit of suggestion of shape of leaves, but you don't need them to look perfect in any way. You want them to be lighter. I just need to put something in this area. All right, so now we're gonna let all of that dry and then we're gonna do one last layer on these leaves over here to bring them to the foreground, to really make them pop. I'm actually just blending them out so we don't have any white, white, white spaces in there. All right, so let's let that dry. I'm gonna use my drying tool. If you have one, you can use one too. Right, 
it's dry enough to do what we need to do. So really nice coat of sap green, really concentrated. You could even add a little blue to it, like a phthalo blue to darken it and like make it more vibrant. So I'm just going to pop in a couple of darker in focus, more in focus. I'm still going for a loose style, so I'm not putting super details on these. All right, and then you can even add in sap green, Payne's gray. I'm just gonna bring up a few. This is with my rigger brush. I love adding contrast and pops of contrast. And last, I keep saying last but not least, I don't know when I'll be done. I'm going to add in a few more details to this center area. I kind of love how that got a little washed out there, but I am going to add in a few dots and a few lines to give that center a little texture. And this is a great painting if you have, if you love to do like splatter. You could definitely add a little bit of splatter to some of these areas. All right, so now that's got some great texture, I'm going to let it dry completely and then take a look. So here we are with our lovely bumblebee painting. Now, I I do want to take this tape off, but I don't because I still have other sections of this paper to paint. So leaving the tape on would be beneficial. But let's just see how this looks with these nice crisp borders. Oh, that looks lovely. I am going to save this tape so I can actually we'll go over here. There we go. We'll just put that on the other side for the next painting. So let's see here. Look at our lovely bumblebee. This looks great. Uh, thank you for painting with me today. I'm Shana Searcy from Umbrella Arts Academy. Would love for you to join me as part of my studio crew if you're not already a member. Um, $10 a month and you get access to all of the exclusive tutorials that are already in the studio crew. And then new studio crew tutorials exclusive to there once a month. Um, oh, I'm sorry, two videos a month at least, as well as a live video session a month. In July, which we have coming up, we actually have four live sessions and several new um, tutorials available in the studio crew. So keep checking with me here. Like, comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and check out that studio crew, and also the description um, of this video for links to my supplies and um, all the materials you might need. All right, thanks so much. Take care and happy painting.